Hello and welcome to another edition of the Eternal Journey. I'm the Resolves and this is Auric Killers. So second blue just took down the ETS with which I think is really well positioned as it doesn't care about in cold blood, which is just gonna make your dark return deck with threats like Dawnwalker and Auric Interrogator just that much better. The curve here is quite low, and I like how the devourers are perhaps used here just to get units in the void so you are able to dark return them back and also counter any sort of silence based removal or even help push you ahead when you are trying to grind for removal. And I think this deck is just going to be really good at grinding, as well as just being a beatdown deck that's going to rely quite heavily on the Xeon Obelisk without actually re requiring it. We have some strange inclusions in the deck like the Lunar Magus, but this stat line is just really good and can really help you out against beatdown decks as it's very difficult for them to deal with an actual 3 4. As well as topping off the curve with a Sandstorm Tire, which is always excellent, and the Xeon Obelisk here, which is just going to turn all of our threats into game enders and is really potent with the Dawnwalker. As well as just helping us have additional ways of turning out Auric Interrogators on and just help us really grind through those cards. We have quite a lot of interaction here, we've got the Virus Choice and the Z Initiation which are just going to help us to keep pushing damage and just removing our opponent's threats and just keep getting in there. You can even use the Z Initiation like proactively in a turn where you've got some spare power just to be able to start getting a bit extra damage by giving one of your units plus one plus one. As when you do rebuy that unit with Dark Return, they will still have the killer and the additional power and toughness. Okay, so let's see what this deck can do and get onto some games. Okay, so easy ship here, just there, one power hand. And this is pretty nice as we do get to lean the Temple Scribe into the Dawnwalker here, so. Quite an easy hand to play out, and then we get a Sandstorm Titan to perhaps rebuy this Dawnwalker later on. Uh, so we're against the Argent Port here. So this would be quite nice if we were playing in Cold Blood. It's written right here. And it's pretty see that it's pretty easy to see that you could do right now. Just play your, the in Cold Blood in your Zen decks. as it'll really help you deal with any sort of Maktos or Tavrods or anything that would traditionally otherwise give you a bit of a problem. I also got a problem must be playing some sort of revenge build here. So just happy to take this damage here. Right, there we go. Uh, power's shaping up nicely for us to get the, the full time required here. So I'm going to suspect that our Dawnwalker is going to be safe against any sort of revenge style decks. Uh, this is the free faction version, okay, so that's interesting. But I'm just going to keep trying to push for damage here and just try to stabilize on this Sandstorm Titan. And then we're going to start digging for something like a Xeon Obelisk or perhaps a Auric Interrogator with these Temple Scribe. We'll play the Temple Scribe just because it's basically card neutral here. Because I do suspect like a perhaps a harsh rule next turn, but the Temple Scribe is basically free. And um, playing out the Dawnwalker doesn't do too much here. As we will be able to rebuy this pretty shortly. So I will aggressively play these in initiation here, just because it cycles it for a card. And it will just help us to find some more threats. As well as having the onboard trick of just having the 5 4 killer. Now, if I promise taking the turn off to play the Ancient Law here, then we're in great shape as we get to keep drawing cards. And as they are a. Let's have. Tap out removal deck here, then I'm just going to wait and play the Iron Abductor at the end of the turn and just sort of get in there. If they do play another Harsh Wheel here, of course. So now we get to play the iron. The darkness. Right, it's going to help us get in again. I think I'm just going to draw my card again off the Xenon Interrogator. As our left is not really under any threat. And opponent has to deal with this again. And then we get to do the same trick where we just get to lead with the iron the abductor. 
And if they have any removal here, then they will have to prioritize the Auric Interrogator, of course. But they pretty much do need two removal spells, or just another harsh will. Uh, is this the third copy we've seen? Yep. So if our opponent does remove this again, they are lethal to just the ion. And if they're just holding a bunch of slow speed removal, then we're in great shape here. So it looks like they've tried to inspire and hit something. Yep, so it's the piercing grief. And we don't need to block here, because we just give up our unit for nothing. So no blocks here, just gonna instant speed in the iron. And then we do get to draw two cards here, so if one of them's a power, we're just gonna get to use the ultimate as well. So we'll just get whichever one's biggest and this will trigger back our Dawnwalkers. So I think we just want the Sandstorm Titan. Uh, this should put our opponent pretty dead here. Unless they need the fourth copy of Harshwell at least just to get through this. And then if they're able to deal with this, we get to do the same trick again with the other copy of Iron. So our opponent's doing the last gasp, Dark returning the Piercing Grief just to draw a card here. I don't see any reason to not block here because I don't suspect our opponent's got a Royal spell to, well, a weapon to back this up where they'd be able to kill our Sandstone Titan. So I think right now they're just sort of treading water. But it's a mad props to our opponent for trying out this deck after it's just been hit by so many nerfs. I did actually enjoy playing the Echo Macto deck. So I'm curious what we've got here because they're only at 13. And here's the Macto. I'm not sure how I feel about this uh, voice line change. Uh, we don't have an ability here, so I guess we're just going to chuck him with everyone. And uh, really, our opponent should be going to chump the Sandstorm Titan here. And uh, just take a bajillion. Uh, there's no reason to play at the Iron Nap, but at uh, end of our opponent's turn, if we're able to deal with this, we're able to just do the same trick, but we also have a free power unit just to churn through any of our opponent's defenses here. And uh, yep. Yeah. They didn't manage to find anything. Okay, so it's a powerful hand, so I think that's an easy redraw. As there's only really one threat there. Uh, this is a hand here where we do actually want to play the Amber Monument down. Sometimes I do like to save this. Uh, but as we are pretty low on power, we've got quite a big top end over the Sandstorm Titan and the Obelisk there. I'd rather just play it down as we're able to cantrip for our deck with the Temple Scribe, should we draw a Time Source here. So let's go against the Legion here. So this could be Clock Roaches, but it could also just be an Legion Horn or a Legion Beatdown deck. We do really need to draw our power here, but the initiate here is time that our opponent is playing a perhaps a beat down deck. So hopefully the blistering blister blister sting wasp is good, although it is pretty loose against any opposing sursos. So we'll need to far as choice any sursos that we see here. Safe travel. So just attack in here for free. If our opponent wants to block with the two on, that's fine. Pretty sure that they'll just keep the initiate the sands home, and then we'll just land a Lunar Magus. And just start trying to hit our power drops that way. So our opponent's thinking there, but I think they're just curious, like, do they get to trade one for free really? And uh, the answer is no, we're gonna play a Lunar Magus. And even if our opponent is gonna permafrost this, then we still get a little bit of value off the Nightfall gaining us free life on our turn. The opponent's slightly ahead as they did get to draw an additional card whilst they've got an additional power source in play. Okay, so we've got a virus choice here, so I have 
got an interesting choice to make. Do I rather choice our opponent's hand now to get rid of any Sursoles, or do I just stop them from outcarding us? And I think the answer is I'm just going to try and stop them from outcarding us here by using the kill effect just to get rid of the friendly wisp and then attacking him for free. So I could have had a lightning strike there, but I'm pretty certain if they did have it, would have saw some sort of fast window when we had the killer effect there. And if our opponent's playing a power and a Cersei, then we've got a pretty decent answer to it. So Varus Choice is a less interesting answer to any sort of Fels Princes, uh, but I think we're just going to play out a Temple Scribe here, see if we can draw additional power. And we do, but unfortunately it's a depleted one. But I'm not too scared of this False Prince, as we'll be able to deal with this soon enough just with our Blister Sing Wasps. But ideally I'm thinking here that perhaps I'm just going to virus choice my opponent on their next turn. The so they do have a valid target here with the Dawnwalker, as this can get quite annoying to deal with. And as we've got a spare copy here, then I think we're just going to see what's going on in my opponent's hand. Uh, they've got Abrakalite, Praxis Displaker, Reinach, Behemoth, and Serso. So we'll get rid of this Serso just because that's going to be the most difficult for us to deal with. And then I think we can just ignore this Dawnwalker, eventually we'll get bigger than it with the Sandstorm Titan. Right. Well, let's go again. Right. Get rid of the Behemoth. I just leave our opponent with mostly fair threats. That we should be able to eventually just outpower with this obelisk. But now we will be doing some trading. We can just put this 1 1 underneath the Dawnwalker, and they're a couple of influence away from being able to replay it. Of course, what opponent's got that can deal 2 damage, unless they've got like a lightning storm perhaps. But that seems quite aggressive. So now they're able to get this time source, but they're still a little bit away from being able to get that threat back there. So I think we're just going to lay some stuff on the board. Uh, so I'm going to keep the Iron Abductor in waiting. And then next turn I'm going to lay down the Obelisk. And if we draw another power, we get to play Obelisk and Blissing Wasp. We'll just kill this false prince now before he gets to do much more damage. Chuck down the aisle. You will feed the darkness. And this is a little bit rough, but I really want to get this obelisk down. Though I think we do actually just need to get the wasp. And perhaps the interrogator. And then next turn we'll be able to start drawing some cards off this obelisk and just keep hitting our power drops until we can get to eight. Step back. I promise managed to unsummon the blister sing wasp. But this is mostly fine, so we need to put 7 in front of the World Bear Behemoth if we want to destroy it. And perhaps I should have thought about that a little bit more. I feel we'll just do this. Then hope to draw a power so we're able to stabilize with the Xenoblisk and the Blissing, or even the Sandstorm Titan and their Blissing. But perhaps our opponent's got a Equivocate here that would really blow out our blocks. Pretty great. I was gonna establish the sandstorm time first, 
And then now I've got a board, I'm just going to play the obelisk next turn. And if we draw a pile, it's even better because we get to play it out a 4 4 iron. As well as getting ever close to getting the plus 2 plus 2, which is going to be really helpful in any sort of sort of mid rangey beat down soup like this. Although we do have to be concerned that our opponent can have the crystallize as an out. So I've got no unknowns here. And I think actually rather than playing the obelisk, I think we just need to hold up the iron and just make some sort of blocks with that. This could be a pretty great swing here for our opponents. The darkness. So I just need to think about how we can do this for the best. So that's where we're taking two. Let's block this. Uh, we've got 14 to try and soak up, but we are at a literal 16. So I think if we do it like this, we take now we take eleven and we gain six. So I think this is okay, and we keep one of our life stealers back. And this is pretty perfect for us. We get to kill the false prince for free. Play Obelisk, have a 4 4 iron, and I think we're actually going to attack here just to gain the lives. And then we we'll get to draw a card. And that card's pretty good because it's going to be the time sigil that'll give us 8 power, so it gives us the full plus 2 plus 2. And right now we're getting. Been pretty hard, but we did get to. Okay, so this is slightly better because we get to play the crest as well. Another Sandstorm Titan is probably going to be able to finish the game for us pretty quickly here. And we are just able to start chunking in for 6 with the Interrogator. And now the game is going to be pretty difficult for our opponent to win. And that just shows the testament of the power of this deck because I felt like I was really far behind. I felt like I had no business getting remotely close to winning. And we do draw the virus choice here, so we're able to bounce our opponent's bouncer and just get in there for lethal. Okay, so this looks pretty reasonable. We do get to play a blisters thing into a Lunar Magus and we do have some initiation and virus choice here just for quite a nice bit of interaction. So I'll just play the banner first, just get it out of the way. As we do start, I need it to start rolling with the blister sting anyway. And we're against Argent Portal, so I'm not quite sure how this matchup will go. But the virus choice should be pretty good against any sort of tab rods here. I might actually play the virus choice quite aggressively. Uh, I'm probably going to try and chuck this down on like turn 4 or something. Don't, don't anticipate any sort of um, charge units for our opponent here, so no reason to sit back with the wasp, just get him for those little points of 1 damage, because they certainly add up. So we're against a free colour deck here, so. Could be a control deck, or something a little bit more spicy. But I'm pretty willing to just keep developing the board and then we can do something a little bit more interesting next turn, like Farah's Choice and perhaps a Zen Initiation, even if it's just to cantrip the interrogator here. Make each bullet count. I suppose we'll 
choice to face. So I'm first playing a back in Lumen. Okay, so this is like a, a free faction lifesteal deck. Well, some of our Algrimus, this is going to be a pain, but I'm pretty sure we can grind for it. We can grind through these cards as well, and the Sylvan Camellia is just too rubbish of a body to matter. So I think actually just get rid of this, just because that's probably going to buy our opponent most time. No, just initiation on here, just so we're able to start our card draw engine going. This is pretty great for us because our opponent's not been able to draw a card here. Okay, well we're just going to virus choice it and then I assume the game would have been pretty academic from there. Okay, on the, on the player, uh, this sounds not excellent. Just a bunch of time sources and no shadows. And this is not much better because we don't have any actual threats. But we should actually be able to find them hopefully and then when we do then we'll be able to do something with this dark return z initiation which will turn one threat into a pretty decent thing and even if it's just something like a blister sing wasp mm. this all works together quite well a sabotage hit um probably gonna take okay taking the initiation so it must be a unit based deck here So I'm just going to try and develop up to this at some time, but as we do have a bunch of virus favors, going to keep this monument in hand just as we'll be able to turn this into an actual threat. That's going to be part of the power of what it is that we're actually doing here. If we'll just develop the Sandstorm Titan first, if it gets Vanquish then, so be it. And then we'll just leave with the Dawnwalker next. Or we could also, if we draw an Unfleet Power, either play at the Monument or just turn this into a big in unit again. And I want to attack here. I probably would have to have something like a Fire Style to sort of really punch us there. And we can have a Mize with the Temple Scribe, but I don't think that's quite worth it. So I'm just going to pause up to five with this. Touch of shadow. You cannot put out the light. I think we're a And this is a pretty good blocker whilst we've got this Sandstorm Titan in play. Although Silence could change all of that. Or any sort of removal spell on the Titan. But at least we'll be able to continue racing. I do, so I draw a little bit of something here, and quest isn't quite what I'm looking for. And I think perhaps we'll just dark return back this Titan and crest. Perhaps slightly out of order, should have figured out what was coming next first. And Rhinox are so running threats. I really want to find some interaction because we do have enough threats to end the game. Just need to be able to get rid of the Unseen Commando before it's able to do too much damage. Okay, and uh, that's aggressive, but it is going to... Yeah, that's fine. But this is just turning our opponent's weapon into a cantrip, because uh, they're pretty much... I felt like the life still's not going to matter, because they do have the Unseen Commando already. I suppose we will just block here with the Temple Scribe. Uh, Temple Scribe gives another Dark Return Tiger, although... Okay, so they're not doing that, they're just keeping the card draw engine in play. That's probably going to be really just too hard for us to come back from here. But <laughs> we are trying to grind him out here. And eventually the Assassin Titan is now big enough to be able to make a block here. But the 
Raw power of just drawing two cards a turn is just going to get the job done. I think the impending doom definitely seals it. A redraw here. So we do sort of need third power here, but uh, it does look like we're just going to be flooded here. But I think at least got enough power here to at least turn the monument into something and round the place so we can't get too punished. If we're against that only morning deck, then at least we get to do something with this Farah's favour. Quest of Vengeance deck, um, they've sort of gone down on Runehammer now, so I think we can pretty happily rise over there. Now, probably takes the Obelisk here, so this was some sort of mid rangey soup mirror. But hoping to fade a virus. Hope that Fader Virus tries it. Uh, we managed. So we're able to develop the iron. Just chucking for a bit of damage. We want to land this Lunar Magus. It's an interesting decision to make this free fall. Because it's certainly a lot more aggressive. As also a lot better defensively as well because it is able to trade and keep back a lot more units. Okay, so the slay hitting army, I guess, which is sort of interesting, but I think I might just get it back as a 4-5 here. But first off, I think we're just gonna play down the 5-5. Five five. Run, cowards! You cannot hide! Now I've got more of an incentive to keep this dark turn back because now I've got a monster with killer. Oops, not use that. Uh, use this one. Just want to guarantee that we're actually getting our damage in. Let's keep developing our power base just in case we do draw on a Robolisk. Uh, there is a risk of just getting hit with a it's sabotage right here. here. But I'm also right here. willing to just try and use it for a little bit more value. Although, if we didn't draw anything here, let's have a look at the graveyard. I can get the Magus, and we have 7 power, so we should have enough to do it all. So, choice up, see if we've got anything interesting, like another Mactum, though I'm pretty sure they would have just played it. I searched the Shadowlands. Mr. Gosanon is still wood. a pretty good target there. Got a which is interesting. Perhaps wanted to block the iron here because it especially stops me from gaining life. But they managed to ambush us with the Macto, which is even better, it seems. And that would give them the opportunity there to have given them a double lock on here, but I'm just going to make the Megas. That was a pretty high roll play to have made there because Macto does go in the top. Isn't the top 10 that Macto goes in? Now another couple of the right okay. So I'm just gonna get in for six. I assume we get double blocked. And this is even better because then at least to get to get rid of this chaff off the ground, then be able to attack in next ground next turn. But probably could we play some sort of this sort of Oh it's to stand together. Okay. Quite an interesting build we're playing against there. Uh, I suppose we'll just get rid of the Macto. But the Macto deck is pretty bold right now. So props to my opponent here. Run, cowards. You cannot hide. Because in cold blood is pretty rough to play against. We're just gonna sit back and not play out anything else here. I suppose the devour sort of playing to giving you a little bit of resilience against in cold blood here. 
Make each bullet count. So we'll just try and develop another one of these, although Annihilate would be pretty bad for us. Uh, they've got some sort of fast spell here, just a little curious where it is. But at least the Mactos don't have any sort of... Uh, could be Devour here, just absolutely blows us out with the block again. But what's that, the mist? So let's get... Get to get a little bit of damage in here. Let's just draw like a death strike or okay. There's a scorpion wasp here. So Prince Decker has actually got a lot of instant speed interaction here and uh, a lot of things to be holding up power for. I bring you aid. But at least we get to hopefully deal with this. Could also be a desert marshal in our future, which would be pretty rough as well. But we just need to keep pushing through here. Because we can't sit here forever. Yeah, so I promise deck is pretty powerful, I think, compared to ours. Especially as we do have the Aegis Mactos now. Just need to keep pushing. And then just to I'm gonna play the power out just in case we draw like an obelisk and something else that we want to play. But I'm not gonna play the seat because that just uh, lets our opponent know exactly what's in our hand. There is no escape. So I suppose we'll just go all in here. There's a wasp, so whatever happens, we get some trades. I've almost got one turn to answer this. And if the deck is full of things like Devour, then they can have some bricks. And it looks like that's what they found. We managed to get there in the end. Okay, and I do really want to see another Shadow Source here, but I wanted to risk it for the last game. Just like if things get really bad, then we can dark return the temple scrap, though. That's not perfect. So we really just want to be having our interrogators dealt with and then being able to dark return and play them in the same turn. It's written right here. Let's play our scrap here just because we want to really hit our third power. And we could be against the unitless JPS here. So. I suppose we can play the Varus Charge just to definitely find out. Yeah, uh, that's where it is. So this can be a rough matchup, uh, especially if our opponent is playing like a full suite of feeding times because that'll really be able to deal with our interrogators. We can manage to grind through this matchup, but it is incredibly difficult. And with no actual card selection here, just to a nice card quality. It's going to be pretty rough if we don't find our third power in pretty much the next draw step. So I suppose that is a slight downside of having Varro's Choice. So as versatile as it is, it's not very good against uh, this sort of deck. Although I don't think that this is like a necessary um, deck in the format to sort of uh, build you the cards in your main deck around. I think Unitless is a little bit more of a, a fluke in terms of designing this game. I'm sort of okay with this Rain Frost because it means we might get to play some stuff Although We will probably get swept up in the next turn sweeper. But at least we get to, if the frog gets dealt with, we do get to Dark Return it back. And our beat down two are not very exciting. I think we're perhaps at the point where I'll just play the Z initiation just as a power sink here. I'll play the frog just because when I'm pretty confident that our board's going to get swept now. Okay, so opponent just doesn't even care about our board. 
before they just um, as we are on low on power they just sweep the board and it'd be pretty difficult for us to rebuild but the reason I initiation the frog is just because that it's something I'm more interested in trying to develop with the dark turn and right now we're no one able to bring back this down walker so I'll just play the instant speed threat instead just make us a little bit stronger if our opponent does wipe the board here but it looks like uh, they're just in the playing with your food mode of the control deck where they're pretty happy just to take four points a turn and then they'll deal with it when it becomes a problem although all of our cards in here are gas so they can't just ignore us forever Okay, so it's a light striker, just wonder where it's going. Uh, just at the eye am. Pretty curious about what build we're against there. So I was just gonna chuck out the interrogator. I really don't need to. But I'm just sort of high rolling this because if this board should be getting dealt with now, I just get to dark turn it back. So I'm not entirely convinced that's actually worth more cards than just destiny, just taking back a frog, but it is a bigger body at least. Okay, Sheltering Rider, so this must be like sort of a more real version of this deck. Okay, so well, we'll keep that out, not more real per se, uh, more more the Macto style. Um, first of all, choice this just so we're able to get an attack in here. I searched the Shadowlands and found my way. I seem to just block the four here. That's pretty fine because it means we still get in for. Like, that's five points over there. I don't have anything worth getting back with the dark turn. I'd rather just use it to get back the frog to draw a card or at least the auric interrogator. I think I'm just gonna keep trying to do this. You don't want to make my allies your enemies. That's pretty much fine by me. I'm just looking to get three points there. And then I'm just gonna dark turn back this interrogator. I must say that this uh, new expansion that's just hit us has been pretty great because I've not seen such a diverse ladder in a while. And I've played these games over the course of two days just because I've not really had the time to be able to play any. You don't want to make my and it's pretty great here because I'm pretty sure we're able to win now. Yeah. As we're able to Magus, and if the Magus is dealt with, we do get to Dark Return it to do the final one point. Our opponent could be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that there's no way they can get out of this. As we would need some sort of silence effect for the Magus. Okay, well, we'll just, we'll just do the Magus so we manage to get out of it. So I'll give him the old gift. Well, I've on a sweet deck there. Just a Sadly didn't get to see it go off too much. Okay, so that was Auric Killers. I did like the deck, but definitely felt the burn of just not having a Xeon and Crest in the deck. And just having to put up with this Crest of Impulse, just so we had a little bit of uh, selection in the deck. It looks really streamlined and linear, and you can sort of see that by it taking up just less than two rows on the deck builder. But I really like a lot of what it can do, and it is able to really grind if you're able to get it interrogate with the additional power and we have quite a lot of ways to do that here as we do have the initiation the dark return and the obelisk which is 12 ways to get there as well as those spells just actually being pretty good in this deck in general i played against a pretty wide range of decks and i did record the videos over two days just because 
my schedule wasn't allowing me to sit down in place for 45 minutes just to get it all in. I really enjoy that every every time I think that Xen and Killers is down and out for the count, that it, someone brings it back and gives it a little bit of love. This style deck has seen a lot of changes over the past year or so. From losing Copper Conduit to gaining some new cards like the Auric Interrogator that we were talking about recently. I think the Varus choice as well is a pretty excellent inclusion as against any sort of other unit based deck this is both when you're already ahead on board you're able to just pick apart your opponent's hand with the one thing that would have stabilized them. And if you're able to if you're getting behind or you know you just want to push damage then you can just bounce back a Cerso or anything that's in the way. So I really enjoy this card although we did see in the last matchup that this is a bit of a brick against the unit was control decks. Although just the existence of this in your faction combination really gives your opponents with rise to the challenge and spells like this in the deck something to really think about as they need to really consider playing around both virus choice and sabotage. Also Dormark is only going to get better if people are leaning so heavily on In Cold Blood. And I think that we can perhaps even play In Cold Blood as well as that's sort of the benefit is we don't have any justice in the deck so the drawback in it per se just isn't even one. Well, those were the games. <laughs> I'm not resolves and this was Auric Killers. Thanks for watching.